And welcome back to Friday Briefing. Thank you so much for staying with us. And so this is our guest anchor segment, but tonight it's a special guest anchor segment uh, because my guest is actually an anchor here at KTN News. Thank you so much, Joy, for coming. Thank you so much. I'm sure me. it's been a tough uh, last week, well, last uh, couple of days, actually. Yeah. So I want us to start from the moment when you're leaving Kenya and you're going to Uganda yeah. for your traditional wedding. What is going through your mind? Um, well, um, I left Kenya going for my traditional wedding. You know the excitement that comes with yeah. having uh, such a moment? Yeah. You know, I was so excited. Preparations were in high gear. Mm -hmm. I went to Uganda. And, you know, the preparations weren't going. And um, it came to that point where I had to travel from Kampala now mm -hmm. to Kasese, which right. is my hometown. And that's where the traditional wedding was going to happen. So I traveled on Tuesday early morning. I was there Tuesday afternoon. And so as soon as I got there, took the baby home and the, and the maid and, you know, came back and started doing preparations, mm -hmm. running about town, making sure everything was right. right. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, the same thing. And so, you know, bringing in relatives, welcoming them Everybody's all the happy. way. Everybody's happy. Everybody, yeah, everybody was, was happy. You know, exactly. everyone is excited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the emotion was really a joyful one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were welcoming relatives, well, I should say now relatives or in-laws mm -hmm. from Nairobi into Kasese town. So it was really a busy, activity-filled uh, Thursday evening because on Friday we were supposed to do what is called the pre-introduction mm -hmm. visit mm -hmm. where the families of both sides get to know each other. And we did that very successfully. On Saturday, the big day, the big day, yes. um, went very well actually. Uh -huh. I remember uh, seeing the pictures, and yeah. you know, it looked so beautiful. <laughs> you know, we'll be having the pictures uh, yeah. in a few minutes. Because I had only asked for eight days mm -hmm. uh, from work, yeah. and so eight days from the time I took my leave, the eight days were now coming to an end. There so you go. on exactly, mm -hmm. um, so those are well. That's there's my hubby over there, and yeah, and then uh, there's the best man, and then my brother, mm -hmm. and a good number of people. So no, that's Saturday. Everything yes. is pomp, <laughs> color, everything, everybody's happy. Oh, yeah, yeah. that was Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually a great day. I had my friends, mm -hmm. my family, mm -hmm. uh, friends of my hubby or fiance for that, uh, for, for that matter. <laughs> I think you've already uh, crossed that line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was a very joyful day. Right. I was happy. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I know the day got done on Sunday, we started making preparations to come back to were Nairobi. Were you supposed to come back on Sunday? We were supposed to travel on Monday morning. Okay. All right. Yeah, so on Sunday I left home because my hubby was living at my uncle's place, mm -hmm. which is maybe a few blocks away from the said um, area that is the palace of the king mm -hmm. in Kasese. Um, he had been living there from the time that he traveled to Kasese. Okay. So I went to my uncle's place just to be sure that everything was on track. If there were pending bills that needed to be paid, we were to go to town, have those bills paid, right. and then um, make final preparations on how we were going to travel from Kasese mm -hmm. back to Kampala before I took a flight on so, Tuesday morning yeah. back to Nairobi. Um, so I left with my brother from home and came down to my uncle's place. So that was about 12.53 p.m. And at about 1.00, 105, we were living, you know, my uncle's place mm -hmm. with a friend of ours called Chris, and we were going to town to make sure all the pending bills had been cleared. So just before we got out of the gate, you know, we started hearing gunshots, and these were sporadic gunshots. Right. And, you know, just... Was it heavy? The scare, was it, just... it was very heavy, okay. actually. Um, very heavy gunshots. And, uh, you know, just the brain freeze you'll have at that point. Mm -hmm. You're like, what do we do? The gate was open mm -hmm. and you could almost see, you know... So was it from close by? Could you tell where it yeah, was Yeah, it was... From? The gunshots were coming from the left side. Mm -hmm. uh, that was very easy to tell because they were really close in the neighborhood. And so, you know, we're just in that moment and we're like, what do we do now? The gate was open. One of my cousins who had opened the gate actually had to take cover on the wall of the gate okay. because we just didn't know what was going right. on. Um, and so Chris, who was driving the car then, had to reverse back into the compound, the back of the compound towards the kitchen side. Mm -hmm. And then um, we stayed right in the car for about 10 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, and we were wondering, what do we do? Do we get out, you know, a stray bullet right. could just right. come onto where you are? Um, so 
my auntie who was now on the kitchen balcony said, you guys come into the house, come, come, come. You know, you, yes. you, you're at a risk, you know, wherever it is that you are. So when I was getting out of the car, because we had stayed in for about 10 minutes, so the rest of the guys came out and I stuck there because I didn't know what to do. And I was like, oh my God, this is actually happening a day after my traditional wedding right. and I didn't really think it but was going to happen. But then at that moment, you still do not know what's happening. You don't know if it's, you know, thugs, yeah. you don't yeah. know anything. Well, not exactly, because mm -hmm. the previous day we had had some gunshots and we had been asking what exactly they were about and they had said, you know, there's some bit of insecurity going on, uh, there's an operation going on. I didn't know really, I didn't know the details of okay. whatever it was, yeah. So on Sunday when that happened and we started hearing the gunshots, you know, when you connect the dots one and two, you probably get so the, the answer, problem. yeah. So at, at that moment, <laughs> I didn't even know what to do. I didn't know if to call my brother and say, hey, where I am, please don't come over here. Yeah, so, because he's the one who had dropped me off earlier. So I walked to the veranda, and then I'm like, what do I do now, you know? And then the gunshots were really heavy, and mm -hmm. they're so sporadic. So I started to walk close to where the rest of the guys were, and that was towards the kitchen side. So we were actually watching from there, and I said, you know what, this actually is something serious. This is newsworthy. Yeah. So my journalistic instincts, kicked of course, in. kicked in. Yeah. And I got my phone and started recording some videos. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could and hear it, the actually gunshots. Actually, from the videos, you could videos. tell it's like you're not too far away from, yes. you know, where all that was happening. Yes. Um, we're maybe about three blocks yes. away. We were at the fourth block where we were. And, you know, I started just recording some videos. And then shortly after, we started seeing smoke coming from, you know, just that distance. Right. And so I still got my phone and took some videos, you know, and citizen journalism, the rest of the guys who I was with, some took pictures, some took videos, you know, it was and a very... And uploaded them? Um, not actually, not really. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't upload them. It was only I who uploaded one on Instagram and then I sent a Facebook post. I didn't share any videos on okay. Facebook. It was just one on Instagram of the flames of that the were flames. coming from, mm -hmm. from the yeah. scene. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, we, you know, the gunshots continued, but this time they were in intervals, yeah. And shortly after that point, you know, somebody came home. He said he was a PRO of uh, the army, and he said uh, he was just, you know, trying to make sure everyone is fine around uh, mm -hmm. the neighborhood and stuff. Um, so, you know, he said a bit about what was happening, and then he left, yeah. So... Now, it was coming to three, of course. Uh, my auntie, who had stopped whatever she was doing, because she was trying to prepare lunch yeah. for us, she stopped whatever she was doing. So after three, she started cooking now again. And at about 3.30, 4, 4.15, that's when we were having our lunch. And so after that point, I said, you know what, let me just rest. Um, let me rest here on the couch. Wake me up after one hour or two hours, because I thought maybe now everything has calmed mm. down. So I slept off and I think I woke up at about 6.45 because my uncle is the one who came in and woke me up and he said, hey, I didn't want to bother you uh, because, um, you know, I thought maybe you needed the rest. Yeah. yeah. But then at that point that I was asleep, I didn't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what my hubby was doing, what my friend right, Chris was right. doing or my cousin, you know, and his brother. I didn't know what they were doing. So at about 6.45, my uncle has come home. He's trying to have a meal. So we hear a knock at the gate. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you know, we didn't know who it was. And because of what had happened during the day, we weren't so sure yes, what to, open the yeah, what to very, do, you yeah. know. Um, but then it kept on. The knock at the gate kept on. And then my uncle went around and he tried to, you know, eavesdrop and see what exactly uh, it could have been. And then he came back and said, um, guys, I think they're asking us all to get out, so get out of the house. Mm -hmm. So one of my other cousins as well was asleep, so they had to wake him up, you know. So everybody now is out. Yeah, so yeah. we're now outside the house and then they tell us, um, has any of you been taking pictures or videos or whatever? You know, because we now didn't know what was going yes. on. These were police officers um, who were asking questions. And right. there were quite a number, actually. There were mm -hmm. about eight or ten. Who came to the house. Yeah, to, who to came to the house, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we, we didn't know what to say. So they just said, uh, did any of you take pictures? Um, so when we went outside the gate now, they were walking towards the gate, and we had to follow them. 
Um, so when we got outside the gate, they said, um, did any of you take pictures? We said, uh, yeah, we took some pictures with our phones and some videos. Mm -hmm. So they collected all our phones and then asked each one of us, you know, to get onto the police car. We got onto the police car, so they drove us towards uh, the palace area mm -hmm. where the scene had been. And then there, I think the person who was in charge, who had given the directive to go and or come to a house, yeah. uh, said, uh, are these the people who have been taking all these videos, videos. and pictures? Yeah. And I think the officer who had come home said, yeah, we have their phones here. And then he said, take them to take the police station. In. So, okay. you know, we were driven to the police station. And what, is, what is going um, through your mind? Probably you're thinking, you know, this is just going to be a few minutes of, yeah, you know, questions. Um, you know, sometimes you when it doesn't actually hit you until you're in the situation. Yeah. And at that point, you're actually thinking, what do we do was now? Was that the you first know? time you were arrested? Yes, that was the first time, actually, I was being wrapped up onto wrapped up a into police a truck, car yeah. and driven to a police station. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually wearing slippers at that point because I just got into the slippers that were in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Everybody else got into the sandals that were close yes. by and off we went. So, so you we get were, to the station, yeah, what happens We then? get to the station and, you know, there was a whole buzz of activity because of what had been happening uh, throughout the day. Mm. So everyone in there was busy, but then they were so tired. You could tell that they were tired from the way they were talking to us. You know, the officer in charge now said, you guys are really making us do a lot of work and we've already had a long day. Mm -hmm. You're just making it worse for us. Um, so at that point, had they told you why you had been taken in? No, because as soon as we got in, the person who took us in said, these are the people who have been taking pictures the on their, on their okay. phones. Yeah, so right. we were taken into uh, the in charge office. And so he said, switch off all those phones and give them to me and give me your names. So we gave the phones again. We, well, the officer who picked the phones from us gave them to the officer who was in charge at the station. And then he said, um, give me your names. So we gave him our names mm -hmm. and then he started asking, so you, what do you do? What do you do? So we all said what we did. So you said you're a journalist. Yes, I said I'm a, I'm a journalist. Like, there you um, go. Yeah, so I became a point of interest just because I said I was a journalist. Yes. Um, but then of course they were trying to figure out the connection someone is from Kenya, the other one is from Uganda, the other one works with KCCA, which is Kampala City Council. You know, so they were trying to find the connection and yeah. that's when I had to explain. My right. introduction was on Saturday and that's why we're here. So, you know, telling the whole story all over again. And so as he's trying to figure out what exactly he's going to do, someone else walks in and says, um, switch, switch on those phones, you know, we need to see what kind of the videos, videos they were they taking posted. or pictures they posted and stuff. So we switched on the phones and um, I, I showed the videos that I had been taken and one of the officers there said, uh, so this was at about 3 p.m. I said, yes, uh, this was about 3 p.m. So in between there, you know, someone else walks in and says, uh, these are the people who have been circulating all these photographs on social media mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, he said, you know, just uh, write down their names and lock them up. Mm -hmm. So we were taken back now to the reception where we had to give away all our property, you know, hand Everything. it over, yeah. take off the shoes, and then making sure we didn't have anything v valuable on yes. us. Um, and so it was at that point that I realized I'm actually going to slip in a cell. In a cell. <laughs> you were the yeah. only woman who was arrested at that time? Yes, uh, it was, I was the only female because my uncle and auntie were told to stay behind. Mm -hmm. um, so the cell was open. <laughs> what was it like? And it was horrible. Mm -hmm. The cell was pretty horrible because I had never been into a place like that. And it was a very tiny room with a ventilator just the size of my hand mm -hmm. and maybe a window that couldn't open. Yeah. So it was so stuffy in there. I could smell it from the entrance. Yeah. Yeah. Very stinky. And, you know, when you get in there, there's no light. There's no candle, nothing. You're just walking into darkness. Yeah. So I, I hesitated. And the lady told me, the lady officer who took me to the cell said, you know, get in. Um, yeah, this 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 so is you're in the same cell in. with the other, with the with males. the ladies. No, no, or no. It the, just okay. was uh, the men were taken to the male cell, right. and I was taken to the female cell. So it took me quite a number of minutes to notice how many cellmates I was with inside <laughs> the cell, uh, and then I realized there were four, mm -hmm. and all of them are so curious. None of them could even speak English very well. The only thing they could 
I guess, respond to was I'm fine, okay. you know? And so I had to take my time trying to figure out who they so are. So at that time, what, what time is that? And do you this have any indication that about, you know? This mm -hmm. actually, was coming to 10 p.m. Okay. when we were taken into the cells. And so I'm trying to figure out who these people are, right. why they're inside the cell. So after that time, you know, because now I guess when your eyes are so getting into darkness for the first time, you can't exactly see. Yeah. But after a few minutes, you know, you sort of get used to the darkness, then you start to notice a little bit of light coming from the <laughs> ventilation. But this whole time, Joy, are you yeah. mishandled in any way? Did, no, did at this point, mm -hmm. I wasn't mishandled. But of course, the awards that were being said while we were taking off our shoes and giving up our property, um, you could hear words like, you guys, you know, you, you think you're special, mm -hmm. you know? Um, we could do just like we've done to the rest of them, you know? So you could hear those words mm. coming out of some of the officers. But now when I got into the cell, I stood there and, you know, of course she locked the door and, and left. She went on with her business. So I stood there for about three hours and I didn't know what to do. I was like, now who exactly knows that we've been arrested, that you've been arrested. besides my uncle and auntie? And are they even, because they're also in shock, are they even going to know that there's somebody they need to yes, call because yes. my son was with my parents? Yeah. Um, so the I whole guess night the whole night I was just in between. I was like I was thinking about my son. I was thinking about all these things were going through my mind. So I got tired of standing and I said, let me sit down. <laughs> so I sat down and leaned on the wall. And then, you know, over time I just dozed off. Okay. So I got up at about, I should say, after about four hours hoping that someone would knock on that door and say, get out of get that out. cell, yeah. but no. The next knock on the door that I heard was that of the police officer, the lady police officer who knocked and said, yeah, it's time to take a shower. <laughs> and I was like, what? Where are we going to take a shower in this place? <laughs> um, but there's something I skipped actually. I was so pressed when I just gotten into the <laughs> cell and I didn't know exactly what to do okay. at that point. So I asked the ladies in the local dialect, what exactly, you know, I want to pee, okay. so mm. what do I do? And they said there's a bucket in the corner over <laughs> there. <sighs> First time. All it right. was crazy. That but was then, crazy, hey, yeah. the next morning we're woken Most, up yeah. to take what a happens? shower. Because we saw a picture of you barefoot, <laughs> barefoot and yeah. uh, what was happening there? Even when at we, that point mm -hmm. in time when we're woken up to take a shower, actually, we're not even told, go pick your shoes, go to the shower. Mm -hmm. No, uh, we're just shown the way to the shower. It was very tiny rooms. The one on the left side was a toilet, okay. and then the other one on the right side was a shower. But it was all cold water, no soap and nothing. So at this moment, so, Joy, do you know that what is happening online? Because that's the time, because Monday morning there was that hashtag, you know, free Joy Doreen Bira. Did you know anything that's what was happening on the outside? Absolutely Do you know that there not. were people concerned about what was happening with absolutely you? Absolutely not. I had no idea. And at this point in time, I guess I was, I was like, I was even still trying to figure out who the people I was with in the cell were. So when I got outside, when we got to the shower, because there was a bit of light, morning light. Uh, that's when I realized we were four. And the two of them mm -hmm. were young girls, really. Right. And they, some of them actually were part of the royal guards mm -hmm. uh, who were working with the palace, mm -hmm. yeah. So now after taking, and actually, by the way, I didn't even take a shower from the shower itself. I was told, pick a jerrican, go to the toilet, take a shower from there. Wow, yeah. okay. And then after that, we were taken back into the cell. Hours later, I was called out of the cell and taken into an interrogation room and asked, um, so what kind of pictures were you taking? I said all the pictures I was taking were actually on, on, on my phone. And no, I didn't even take pictures. I only took videos. Um, was there a camera at that point in time? So I said, I honestly, if there was one, I don't know at what point those pictures were taken. So they had seen a flash coming from the compound. And so that, at that point, that is where they actually tried to interrogate who took the pictures, okay. what kind of pictures were taken. And so, you know, the interrogation really went on. And then they told me, um, just go pick your sandals. We're going back to do a search. So we went to do a search. And I think the point where we went back to my uncle's place to do the search, that was the most traumatizing part of, of this whole thing. Um, because, you know, I went there and they asked, so where did you take the videos from? I walked to the spot where I took the videos and I showed where I had taken them from. So they said, where is the camera? Um, I said, I used my phone, I didn't use a camera. If there's somebody who might have used a camera, it maybe is my hubby. 
Um, so, you know, they started now interrogating and saying, you know, we need to find out where exactly mm -hmm. these things mm -hmm. are, you know, so they did a search in the house. So we're doing the search in the house and then one of them says, come out. Um, so they said they had found the camera that had been used. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you know, they found the camera, but they didn't have the memory cards. And then they had to figure out where the memory cards were. So they said, um, so where are the memory cards? I said, I don't have them. So were they harassing you at that time? Yeah, actually. Um, there's one who said, if you don't tell us, you know, we could actually just finish you off. We could actually just kill you because you better start talking. Mm -hmm. The faster you talk, this, the faster this gets done. And then one of them actually hits me with a gun in my backside. Oh. And so I tripped and fell down. And then he said, just open up her top and check for the memory cards. We need to know where those memory oh. cards are. So there was, was a lady abusive. officer mm -hmm. there who unzipped my top and then checked all the way through my bra to figure out if there were memory cards in there. So she couldn't find them. And then one of the officers there said, take her and check her, check everywhere, check mm -hmm. her private parts, whatever it is, if, as long as you get those memory cards. So I said, I actually don't have the memory cards. So, you know, the, the threats were there and, you know, there were people saying things like, oh, you know, these journalists, they're just very disturbing, you mm -hmm. know, every time they're trying to disorganize us, you okay. know, when we're trying to do a job and things like that. So, you know, there were words that were very insulting that were said, okay. you know, things like, oh, you know, these ones, they're just pretending to be journalists. Some of them could even be prostitutes. And I was like, oh, my so goodness. So it was abusive. Yeah, it, it to an extent, yes, it was. So take us now to the time when now they released you. You know, yeah. what grounds did they give you that, you know, we arrested you because of this? Did, you, did they explain that to you? So after hours, because now they had to bring in my husband, um, who actually How now, was he taking this all by, you know? It was actually new. He was shocked, but he didn't even know what to do. So he was just following instructions. Following instructions. They tell him to do this. He does it. Um, so he's the one who showed where the memory cards were okay. because he was the last person to handle the camera. So we were brought back to the police station. This whole time, the, all the interrogation mm -hmm. was done at my uncle's place. So we were taken back to the police station and back into the cell. I was taken back into the, into cell. the cell. So I started thinking, wow, this thing has just begun. It's not about Again. to end. Yeah. yeah, so after a few minutes, they called me back out mm -hmm. and there the lawyer was, that was Nicolas Opio. And uh, he's the one who, you know, gave me the courage. At that point, that's when I started to tear, actually, because it had been a very long day. Right. The interrogation had been so intense. And when I saw him, I, I probably thought there must be a ray of hope okay. now that he's here. And that's when I started seeing a lot of people outside. There were journalists outside there. And I could see, you know, that's when it actually started to hit me mm -hmm. that this could have actually been told. And then now At that point, yeah. we saw the charge sheet that, you know, they charged you for abetting terrorism. Yeah. Why is that case right now? What is going to be happening subsequently? So, first of all, I don't even understand the charge itself because I don't know if whatever it is, mm -hmm. the videos that are on my phone could amount to such charges like abetting terrorism. And I think maybe they, they always do that to intimidate, to intimidate journalists. journalists. Yeah. Because I don't think what the videos on my phone, there's nothing graphic. I didn't share anything graphic. Mm -hmm. The video I posted on Instagram was not graphic. And in even any to some way. point, Joy, it felt like you were just talking about seeing your heritage come down. I remember you, yes, you said something to do yeah. with that. Um, I'm not really a fanatic, I should say. But I do cherish my tribe. I'm very proud of where I'm from. Um, I'm proud of my heritage mm. so anyone who sees flames uh, you know coming okay. from a place that you think holds a certain part of your heritage all right you get emotional because you're like all of this is actually going in my eyes and okay. i have nothing to do about it yeah so that was the only video i posted on instagram and then right. a facebook post as well just right. talking about what i had witnessed what you that had day witnessed. yeah all right so we'll, we'll we'll stop the conversation here and then we'll continue i'm sure you know uh what is going to be happening you're going back to uganda yes, next I have week a, i have a mention on the 8th um and so I hope that the authorities can actually realize that it was a mistake. It was a mistake. And, uh, you know, those All charges right. are just ridiculous. So we'll be talking about that. And yeah. also, you know, the support that you got. I'm sure, like you mentioned, you did not know that all these things were happening. Yes. Uh, you know, back in Kenya, you know, and even in Uganda. So we'll yeah. be talking about that reaction. Yeah. yeah. And, you know.
you know, yeah, what well, next? Um, well, we'll be talking that about, <laughs> about that shortly, Joy. All right. This story is so intriguing, you know, it's like a movie scene, but we'll be talking about that. But, in, I mean, it's important that, you know, journalists share their experience because we get to tell other people's stories, but no one gets to hear ours. Yes, All yes, right. that's for sure. So we'll take a break here on Friday Brief.